Hi guys, my name is Jonathan Sippel. I'm a photographer and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your very own DIY ring light for under $100 Canadian, which is actually probably more like 70, $75 American. I haven't actually tried making this yet. This is actually gonna be my first time trying. I just thought of it earlier on today when I was watching a friend use his own ring light and it actually kind of looked like a basketball rim. And I was just thinking like, <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if he, if he, you know, turned it sideways and like, you know, like not like that's obviously a really bad idea. But then I was like, wait a second, wait a second. I wonder how much basketball hoops cost. They actually aren't that expensive. And I know that I've seen them at thrift stores before for under $10. Maybe just grab one of those. Anyway, I should get to the point. I bought myself a basketball hoop. This one is for making our very own ring light with. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today as I figure it out myself. The main things that you're gonna need are LED lights. I forgot to mention, this strip is 16 feet long. A basketball hoop, double-sided tape, aluminum foil, a scalpel or X-Acto knife, a marker. Oh, and then just also like a can-do attitude because we're saving money and we're being kind of creative and craft, crafty. <laughs> I'm gonna start by opening the basketball hoop. Fancy schmancy. Whew. Unless you're shooting with a 400 millimeter F 1.0, you shouldn't have a problem fitting your lens through this. Okay, so like proof of concept, like this is the first time I've actually seen this. It stands on a surface. You can like take the pictures. Yeah, give it to me. Oh yeah, strike a pose. What's great about it too is you got all the mounting holes right here. We're just gonna focus on getting the light attached. So my idea is that we're gonna take the double-sided tape and just put it around the outside and then just wrap the LED all the way around and hopefully it'll just cover the whole thing. Okay, so now that you've put your double-sided adhesive all the way around the outside of the rim, you're going to want to find the halfway point of your unraveled LED light. Take our marker and put a little line on it. Not over top of the light, but just between two. Take one side of your LED strip and put it through the little clip that holds onto the net, like for, for basketball. It's a bit of a tight fit, but it does go through, on mine anyway. You're just going to want to have your LED light right in the center at the top. Okay, the moment of no return, taking away the adhesive. We're just going to start like this. I expect this to be pretty tedious. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six loops around the rim between the first and the second net clip. If my calculations are correct, we should be able to do six loops on the rim between each of the net clip segments. Say that 10 times fast. So now we're taking this and going through the second net clip. So something I just noticed is that at this point right here, these two net clips, have this bar mounted at the bottom. Now, this bar makes it thicker, so we're actually not gonna be able to do six loops around and still have enough space to get to the end. So we're actually just gonna do, I'd say four between this two. I don't think it'll actually make too much of a difference with the end lighting effect, so we should this should be forgiving. So this is the first half and I'm actually really happy because we've done a nice dense 
wrap all the way around this side and we still have a little bit left over, which is perfect for covering this space right here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and hopefully wind up with a little bit again. One thing I forgot to mention is you're gonna need some tape. Doesn't matter if it's duct tape, gaff tape, masking tape, as long as it's just tape that sticks and holds things where you need them, that's all that's important. Even though the adhesive is holding it down, it's still not as tight as I had hoped it would be. So we're just gonna tape it down just to make sure that it, it, it doesn't unravel when we're doing the other side. This is looking so good. Okay, okay, okay. So now I just, I'm halfway there. I'm just gonna do the other side now. Oh, the final stretch going through the last net clip that we're gonna go through. And here we go. All right. How's that looking? So big. All right, so the next step is to figure out what we're gonna do with these little guys and that area at the bottom. This is perfect for covering up this bottom part, right here where it doesn't, where it can't wrap around. So I, I don't think this could have lined up much better. All right, so now that we've got it taped up to fill up this gap, we've pretty much fully covered the <coughs> diameter circumference of the rim, which technically makes the ring light portion of it complete. All we really need to do is make the reflector, uh, but I'm too excited to wait. So let's just try it out and see if this works. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Free, free, free. <laughs> All right, so I've moved things around a little bit just so I can show you guys a little bit better what I'm working on. I've also decided to add an extra camera to the mix so I can get more angles on what I'm doing so you guys can understand a bit better. The most important thing that we're going to need is cardboard and that's what I've got this for. We're gonna be cutting it up and turning it into something useful. I'm starting by tracing a loose circle around the outside of the rim. This is where I'm going to cut. Almost knocked my glasses off. I'm leaving some space on the inner circle so the reflector doesn't rub against the light. So for this next step, I'm going ahead and cutting out strips of cardboard like this, and I'm cutting against <clears> the, the corrugation. So that way when I fold it, I can fold it like this and turn it into a rounded shape. This is going to be the outside of the reflector to keep the light in. So now I'm creasing with the lines to get this look on the cardboard, so it's nice and round. Oh, I better cut out the center while I'm still thinking about it. I've gone ahead and taped all the side pieces together, and now we fix them to the back. So I'm starting by putting tape on the inside of the reflector because I'm going to flip it over and cover up the outside with tape, but I don't want it to fall apart when I do that. So I'm starting with the inside first, since gravity's on my side. At least I got gravity on my side. Now I'm gonna take longer strips and cover up the outside as well.
All right, next we're gonna do the same on the inside. I decided to skip ahead since it's a lot more of the same thing. Our next step is to cover the inside of the reflector with the aluminum foil. To make it stick, we're going to have to fill the inside of the cardboard with tape loops. For the next step, we're going to use the aluminum foil to line the inside of the reflector. We're going to use the shiny side for the maximum reflection. I'm going to try this. Once the foil is properly set into the reflector, I trim away the excess sheet. Proceed to adding tape. <coughs> Lots of tape. And repeat. And repeat. And repeat. And <coughs> repeat. And one. Oh my gosh. Whew. It's basically what I was thinking. It just looks a little bit pov, but maybe it is. Nothing wrong with that. So there's one thing that I realize I messed up on. This area down here should have lights facing out, but I actually have them facing out on the other side. So that's easy to fix. I'm just gonna take out these pieces of tape and I'm gonna bring it on to this side. I don't think this part is actually going to be too difficult. I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape around the base and I think it'll hold pretty nicely. So now you can see that when I lift here, although it sticks at the base, the rest of the ring light comes out from the reflector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wire and I'm going to poke it through on each side of the basketball rim. And then once it comes through the cardboard on the other side, I'm going to twist it like a twist tie and hopefully that will keep the two stuck together without blocking any light. Just have to work it through. I'm going to twist these two pieces of wire like so. It may not be beautiful, but I think, I think that might be all I need. All right, so now I'm done and my basketball rim ring light is complete. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, might not be pretty, but like, I think this is what I was aiming for. The, the tape might be coming off a little bit. Well, are you ready to see it light up? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that looks good, that looks good. Oh, you might be wondering why I'm not lit up by it. That's because it's not facing me. Here we go, yeah. So the reflector is doing a great job. It's lighting me up and keeping all the flare out of the camera, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. Why don't we turn off the lights and come in for a close up? Not bad, eh? One thing I noticed is that the camera flickers a little bit when I film. That's something to do with the LED lights, but I'm sure that I can compensate for it if I play around with my shutter speed a little bit more. In the meantime, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. <clears throat> so I was thinking, what better place to try out my basketball ring light than a basketball court? Da, 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 da. So I've got a pretty simple setup. I've got a light stand, and the light stand is connected to a super clamp. The super clamp is holding onto the basketball rim. And for a power source, I've got it plugged into a Paul Buff Vagabond Mini. You can buy the Vagabond Mini on the Paul C. Buff website. It's the same place that makes alien bees. Let's get started. Since I couldn't take pictures of myself, I decided to call up a friend. This is Nucky. He's a musician and he loves basketball. So we're gonna play around with some shots and see what we get. So this is what Nucky looks like with the light on and this is what he looks like without. As you can see, he's a lot darker without, but with it on, it fills in the shadows really nice without affecting the background. The great thing about a ring light is that there's light coming from all sides of the lens, so there aren't any obvious shadows. So 
So just because this is a ring light that you typically shoot through, it doesn't mean that you have to use it that way. You can also use it as a regular light that adds different effects. As you can see here, it gives a nice separation between his back and the background. Is this looking right towards me? Nice. For this shoot, we purposely waited till just after the sun set. That way, our light would be able to overpower the ambient light. Good. And then like maybe, maybe like turn around so you're facing yep. towards the rim. If you found any value in this video, feel free to hit like and subscribe. I have a lot more content that I'm going to be releasing on a regular basis. All that has to do with photography and doing things cheaply while getting a really good quality outcome. If that interests you, join me for the ride and I'll see you on the next video.